Hello everyone, this is Corpa, and today we'll be looking at the new DLC of Total War, Rome 2, called Beasts of War, which as you can imagine contains animals to use on the battlefield. I will be showing off all 7 new units, which are the Milesian Dogs, the Beehive Onager, the Scorpion Pot Ballista, the Snake Pot Ballista, the Camel Cataphract, the Celtic Warhound, and the mercenary Assyrian Armored Elephant. So let's get to them. So here we are at the Milesian Dogs. As you can see them, I'm comparing them to the War Dogs, which are the basic unit in Rome too. Uh, there are also the Savage Dogs, but they have the exact same stats as the War Dogs, just a different skin, uh, as far as I know. So as you can see, the Milesian Dogs, they have a higher recruitment cost and a higher upkeep cost. And the difference between the War Dogs and the Milesian Dogs is that the Milesian Dogs have more melee attack. Uh, the rest is, uh, you know, well, totally the same, besides having a different skin, of course. So, let's see them in action. So I'm watching this um, Legion dog squad towards the enemy, which you can see in the distance over there. And only Epirus, uh, one of the Greek states, can recruit this uh, unit. So it's a nice addition to uh, their roster. So we'll see how they do. Let's release the hounds. Hmm, they even did some impact damage. Well, as you can see, our dog squad is chewing through this Eastern Spearman squad very nicely. This is because, well, the Eastern Spearmen are light troops and these dogs are highly efficient versus uh, these light troops. They will eventually attack uh, Ponton Swordmen, which are very heavy melee infantry. And the dogs will take more casualties, but still manage to do quite a lot of damage versus the heavy melee infantry. But enough about these dogs, let's get to the artillery pieces the beehive onager so as you can see with the greek beehive onager now uh, and we're comparing them to the normal greek onager as you can see the stat wise the greek beehive onager doesn't have any advantage even in my opinion the greek onager is better when you look at the missile damage you see uh, that the greek onager does way more this is because the greek onager uh, basic round is the boulder which well of course does a high amount of damage to buildings so that's why the missile damage is so high uh, but if you look down to the abilities and the strength and weaknesses you see that the greek onager also has another advantage a flammable round and that the greek beehive onager only has a poison round so that will mean probably that a greek beehive onager can only fire beehives and no normal boulders or uh, poison rounds which are i believe uh, corpses of animals which the greek onager can fire but let's see how they are when we check both of them out in a custom battle so here we are with the Beehive Onager and some normal Onagers to see what the main difference is between them. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Beehive Onager has only one round, which is the Beehive. And the normal Onager has uh, three rounds. The standard round, which is the boulder, the poison round and the flammable round. So the normal Onager has a lot of diversity already uh, compared to the Beehive Onager. Uh, I already tested them once, so I'm gonna show you something which uh, I find very interesting. As you can see, I select the normal uh, of the poison rounds on the Greek, uh, well, on the normal onager. And as you can see uh, in this case, uh, both the debuffs are applied. So these units have now a double uh, melee attack reduction, double melee defense reduction, and double firing range reduction. Uh, which uh, is very nice. Uh, also, the beehives uh, onagers does a lot of uh, damage over time. Uh, if you can get them to fire into a close pack uh, of units, I'm gonna continue this now. I'm gonna keep firing with the beehives. I'm gonna do this at high speed so we can see more damage being done. 
My opinion is still that they should add at the beehives as an extra muni munition or extra round to the normal onagers instead of making a whole a new unit. Because the, the major uh, disappointment in the beehive onagers is that they cannot fire normal rounds. So if you bring them to a, to a city to fight, uh, they can't take down the enemy walls, which is really odd because the beehive onagers, well, are nothing but normal onagers just filled with a beehive uh, so they should be able to fire a boulder but well somehow they can't also the beehive onager can be recruited by Athens, Epirus, Macadon, Sparta and this last name I'm probably gonna say wrong but uh, Syracuse but enough about this beehive onager let's get to the next artillery piece the scorpion pot ballista as you can see we had the scorpion pot ballista and I'm comparing them to the eastern ballista. And when you look at the missile damage you can see that the scorpion pot ballista's missile damage is way lower than the normal eastern ballista damage. This is because the eastern ballista can shoot uh, boulders as for the scorpion pot ballista it only shoots scorpion pots. And when you take a look at the abilities, they have um, you know, mostly the same abilities except that the Scorpion Pot Ballista cannot shoot explosive rounds, flammable rounds and probably not the basic boulder as well. But we're gonna check that out in a custom battle. So here we are where we're gonna test the Scorpion Pot Ballista. The Scorpion Pot Ballista can re be recruited by Pontos and Parthia. And I'm now playing as Parthia and I'm testing them again versus the ponton spearman as i said uh, the main disadvantage of the scorpion pot ballista same goes for the beehive onager and probably the snake pot ballista as well uh, that they can only fire one round this means that they cannot be used uh, to take down city walls which is really a shame and they just should have added the scorpion pots as an extra round for the normal uh, ballistas but we're gonna see what the effects are when you fire them at some unsuspected spearmen. Well, as you can see, you see, you see little scorpions flying around, and the uh, scorpion uh, pot ballista also give the poison round debuff, which is uh, very nice. Uh, and I'm wondering if they all three, so the beehives, so the normal poison rounds, and this can stack. So it could stack up three or more times, which would be nice, but then again, uh, I don't think you will actually use it in, in multiplayer or even in single player. But again, it's a nice addition, it's just sad that uh, it's a whole new unit and not just an, a new ammunition or a new round for the normal uh, ballistas. Because as you can see, the normal eastern ballistas have uh, three rounds, the explosive rounds and the flame ball rounds. And uh, of course the normal shot. But enough about the scorpion pot ballista. Let's get to the next artillery piece, the snake pot ballista. So here we are at the snake pot ballista. And as you can see I'm comparing them to the Carthaginian ballista. And as with the other two artillery pieces the main difference will be that the missile damage is lower than the original uh, Carthaginian ballista. And that's because the snake pot ballista can only shoot uh, snake pots, uh, no normal rounds, explosive rounds, or flame ball rounds. But let's see them in a custom battle. So here we are, where we're gonna test the snake pot ballista and comparing them with the normal ballista. As you can see, the normal ballista can shoot three rounds, and snake pot ballista can only shoot snake pots. But let's see how they are when we fire them at some spearmen poor spearmen they get fired a lot <laughs> upon them as you can see they do well quite nice damage actually and they also give the debuff poison rounds I have to admit that these snake pots do way more damage than the other two the beehives and the scorpion rounds but I'm not totally sure but as with the other two artillery pieces uh, it's sad that they didn't just add an extra round but in instead made a whole new unit out of these uh, ballistas which then again means if you take only the snake pot ballistas you can't uh, take down uh, a city wall 
Uh, so they're pretty useless at that. But still, it's a nice addition to the already existing uh, rounds. And the snake pot ballista can only be recruited by Kartic. But enough about these artillery pieces, let's get to some real interesting units, the Camel Cataphracts. So here we are at the Camel Cataphracts, and I'm comparing them to the Eastern Cataphracts, because they're the same class, only you know, one has a camel and one has a horse. As you can see, there are some uh, different uh, stats, and the Camel Cataphracts have slight uh, lower health, but the rest are better than the normal Cataphracts. Also, when you check uh, the abilities, uh, you can see that the camels have an interesting ability, scare horses, which their predecessors, the camel spearmen, has as well. Uh, I actually never used them, so I'm really interesting to see how they actually work uh, in a battle. So let's uh, check them out in the custom battle. So here we are with the camel cataphracts and we're gonna test them versus Pontos again but this time not versus spearmen but versus their horses to see how the ability scare horses uh, actually works. But first take a, let's take a look at the unit. Um, they exist out of 80 uh, camel riders so which is nice because it's the same as the horse riders and they have the exact the same abilities which is trample and diamond formation. Which it will be very nice uh, when we're gonna charge with them. So let's see, we're gonna take one unit, I'm gonna march that one up, I'm gonna set it in diamond formation, so a lot of extra charge value. I'm gonna speed this up a bit, and we're gonna see how this is gonna work. So let's see how this goes. I'm not really charging if you ask me, but then again, the candles are oh, there. They go. <laughs> they charge right through it because they're heavy horses. Yeah, they're very nice, nice anti-cavalry units. Yeah, shaken, frightened horses. As you can see, the scare horses is a, mor a morale debuff, which will affect uh, only horses, which is very nice. And as you can see, with one unit, we uh, managed to break two units already. And as you can see, eager, frightened horse. So it's a real uh, morale debuff, even though they're not fighting yet. Yeah, in my opinion, uh, this uh, Camel Cataphracts, although I've read they were already in the game, uh, but they're still very nice units and I'm glad with the addition. The only uh, downs, uh, downside is, uh, if you ask me, is that as you can see, they're now in melee and they're using melee weapons like axes and swords take down their opponent uh, well it would be um, way better if they use spears but the animation is very nice and, well, and they're very strong and very powerful uh, cavalrymen or camel man even you can see we lost a few units but they're still uh, in the fight I actually have no idea uh, what this low, high threat is, when, uh, when you, what you see in the drop down box over here. So I see that with all the new the units, which has been added with the new DLC. But enough about the camels, let's uh, move on to another hound pack, the Celtic Warhounds. So here we are with the Celtic Warhounds, and as you can see I'm comparing them to the War Dogs, which I did early on with the Malaysian uh, Dogs as well. Um, and the only difference as you can see is that the Celtic Warhounds have a lower melee attack, but a higher charge bonus. So that's very nice for a barbaric tribe to have another unit with a high charge bonus, so they can cause a major morale impact uh, when they start uh, the fight. So let's see them in a custom battle. 
So here we are, where we're gonna see the Celtic Warhounds in action against our friends from Pantos uh, and their spearmen. As you can see, the Celtic Warhounds, well, like any other uh, Warhound pack out there, has no additional abilities, just uh, release animals. And they look very nice, although I'm not sure if they exactly look the same like the Savage War Dogs, because I actually never see them or saw them in action. So let's see what the impact is they can cause on the Ponton Spearmen. So they're in range now and we're gonna release the Hounds. And they should have a higher charge bonus so the impact damage on these uh, Eastern Spearmen should be uh, better than the other Hound pack. And as you can see again uh, there's a high threat box. No idea what it is, so if you guys know, please let me know uh, in the comments. As you can see, the impact is minimal if you ask me. But they still do a lot of damage. And I'm actually quite fond of the Warhound packs. And I'm glad that uh, more factions are able to make these Warhounds now. And as you can see, they do a lot of damage versus light troops. Although these are medium troops even. I still manage to, t to take down a lot of them. And I'm glad that they uh, have, have been added uh, into the game. And the following tribes can recruit them, which are the Isini. The Cantiasi, the Caledones, the Dematea, the Dunmoni, the Brigantes, and the Ebdani. I probably mispronounced some of them, so let me know down in the comments. And we're gonna take a look at the last unit, the Syrian Armored Elephant. So here we are at the mercenary Syrian armored elephants. This is a mercenary unit only, which is interesting uh, of itself. Uh, and I'm comparing them to the Indian armored elephants. They're not totally the same, because the mercenary Syrian armored elephants throw javelin, or well, the men on top of them, and the men on top of the Indian armored elephant uh, use a bow. So when you s uh, check down uh, to the abilities, you'll see some differences, uh, like uh, the Indian armored elephant can use whistle shot, and that's because they use arrows, and the mercenary Syrian armored elephant can use flame shot. Uh, and for the rest they have well, exact the same uh, stats so let's check them out in a custom battle so here we are where we're gonna see the mercenary Syrian armored elephant in action armored elephant! and as I said before the mercenary elephants uh, they don't use bows like the Indian armored elephants but they uh, throw javelins so there are few different abilities they can use they can only use normal shot and flaming shot well, i don't have to tell you that the elephants are very powerful in melee and in range and that yeah <laughs> that's really strong they can only be hired in the following areas which are dura antios uh, tyros and uh, palmera no idea where that is, but it's, uh, I believe it's only the solutions can recruit them in multiplayer, so that's around uh, those parts. Well, I'm just gonna show off one charge, because well, everyone knows the elephants are very, very strong units, and they can nearly decimate uh, any unit. And they're vulnerable to javelins, uh, normal bow fire, and well, flame shot, which will cause them to run amok and do a lot of damage to well, any units that stand close to them even if those units are your own but then again you have the option to kill the elephant uh, if the need arises so we're gonna charge right in the middle of these eastern spearmen and although these uh, eastern spearmen are good versus large creatures such as the elephant you'll see that uh, we will be able to break them very easily I'm gonna use the stampy but option to uh, give a little bit of extra weight to the charge. And as you, <laughs> as you see, we nearly with one charge killed this entire Eastern uh, Spearman uh, group. I 
I really like the elephants, I'm really fond of them, they're very powerful but very expensive, they cost 1000 uh, to recruit and another 1000 in uh, maintenance or upkeep each round. And I hope to see more uh, animals in battle, although I have no idea which ones. So that, that was the DLC, uh, Beasts of War. Uh, check down uh, below for the links to the Steam store page. The price is uh, €2.49 or your original equivalent. Uh, uh, my opinion is that the price tag on this DLC is way too high. For just 7 units uh, where some of them are actually not give nothing new to the game and with that I mean the artillery pieces because they should just have added uh, another round to the already existing uh, units and sadly they didn't I really like the camel cataphracts, uh, the warhounds uh, in general and the elephants but like I said uh, the price tag for this DLC is in my opinion way too high and they should have added these for free and I hope in the near future uh, Creative Assembly and Sega will focus more on bringing us new campaigns or totally new features as they did in the Caesar in Goal campaign which I really enjoyed and I still enjoy till this very day but we will see what happens in the near future. This has been Korpa, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.